What's good, YouTube? It's your boy, Cal. Bring another video on the channel today. So, um, today's video is about who are you, right? And before we get into that, I just want to say, this is my opinion. It's my opinion only. If you disagree, that's perfectly fine. Make sure you leave it down in the comment section below. I want to hear your viewpoint. Maybe it'll influence me to think a different way. But uh, this is primarily just for me to help you think of a different perspective that you may not have been aware of in the past and um yeah just overall rethink uh this certain aspect of life and it may help you if you listen closely and really take it in so uh, yeah let's get right into it who are you what defines you as an individual when you are all alone and not acting in any particular way with no distractions what are you like Think about those questions. What do you like? When you're all alone, you're not near your friends, you're not near your parents, you're not acting a particular way. So, I mean, we're always acting, right? And whether that's in a certain situation or not, whether we're alone, right? I know I act a particular way, I'm much more calm, much more chill, and overall, I'm just like a very easygoing, relaxed person, right? But I know always when I'm around my friends, I'm kind of more hyper, more loud, you know, maybe, um, more aggressive depending on what we're doing, you know, whether they be playing basketball, whether they be playing, you know, just different types of things. Whether I'm um, with my mom, you know, I may act a certain way in the sense that I'm not showing as many characteristics as I truly am, you know. So, and then it, it, it's just all natural, and it's each and every individual within society does this. No one is completely free of their ego. There's this uh, sociological term known as traumaturgy. I've mentioned this in past videos and it's essentially the idea that life is a never-ending play in which we people are actors, right? So as an actor, right, we're always acting differently out of ourselves and we're always taking a step away from who we truly are. Whether this be because of our self-esteem, whether it's because of our self-image, self-importance, right, we may act a certain way that we may not genuinely feel just to protect our own self-image and the viewpoint of others, right? And it's kind of just interesting to think that our mind creates this game, right? So our mind creates situations and that aren't actually going on, right? So if you if you take this for example, right? For me personally, I see this girl that I'm like interested in the gym, right? I kind of catch her looking at me. I create this whole game in my head and I, it takes my energy and it focuses primarily on that. I'm not... I'm distracted by that rather than focusing on my workout and just going in a natural flow state with no distractions, no outside um, activities that could potentially draw my attention elsewhere. And it's it's kind of interesting to see how through daily life our ego, our self-esteem creates this game within our head, right? It forces us to think a certain way, right? And when it forces us to think a certain way, we start to feel a certain way and then we start to believe that, right? And so eventually that creates our reality, right? So if I believe that this girl is looking at me, you know, if I get the thought that this girl is looking at me, right? I, and I get, and I start to believe that she's like, okay, maybe she's into me, right? And I get the feeling like, oh, she's into me, you know? And then I start within my reality, I start to act the way my mind wants me to because it has to hold up my self-image, hold up my self-esteem and my self-importance in the viewpoint of her, right? So think about that. It controls our emotions, it controls our reality, and it's very interesting to see how in, how impactful this is within so much of society today. And it's crazy to think how much society has slept on this issue and no one is really aware of it. And, you know, people are waking up to the fact this is, you can actually, to a certain extent, you know, obviously people um, naturally with that chemical imbalance feel a certain dysmotions. You know, I'm saying if you, if you are a person who is emotionally stable, is emotionally capable of controlling their emotions and mind, right? You can actually choose how you feel. And I know that sounds very, very close-minded, but actually it's very open-minded. I'll go into detail on why that is. Um, the mind controls our reality, right? As I said before, our thoughts lead to our beliefs, which create our emotions and ultimately our reality, right? So if I believe that I'm dog shit at baseball, right? Then I'm gonna, I'm gonna play like dog shit. It's all created in here, whether it's created through mind games, through different spiritual videos, um, on YouTube and uh, my own research in general, there I believe there are two sides to the mind. Obviously, there are plenty of sides to the mind, but I'm just talking in general, right? I believe there is an ego and your true self. The ego, right, is your self-esteem. It's your uh, self-importance and image 
in the viewpoint of others. Our true self is one that does not care about our self-image and one that is just experience, experiencing natural flow and is in the moment and is free of distractions created from the mind. Our right. ego is our self-esteem, right, and self-importance. It is responsible for the limits we go within reality and a sense of our self-image when looked at in the viewpoint of others like I was discussing earlier. This can be seen as our natural thoughts that come into our head when we're not even trying to think about something. Have you ever just been sitting there, right, and out of nowhere, like a random thought will come in, maybe about an ex-girlfriend, a negative thought too. It can harp on your emotions, it can harp on your feelings at that time. So through this whole entire spiritual uh, self-growth journey, I've always thought that I was my thoughts. And I always thought that my mind defined me as a person, right? If I thought something bad, it took a toll on my character and my emotions as a person, right? But... Through practice of through the practice of meditation and uh, different ways of, to observe my thoughts, I was able to realize that you are not your thoughts, right? So, your self-esteem, right? Your ego, your false self, right? It controls your mind to a certain extent if you allow it to. In right? meditation, right, you're able to close your eyes and develop a sense of awareness of the moment and. It's very, it's a very good practice to develop a better sense of who you are and your true self, right? No distractions, you're in the moment, you're able to just be in a flow state of mind. Through meditation, right, you're able to observe your thoughts, right? And these natural thoughts that come into your head without even trying, right, may be negative. They have a connotation that can harp on your feelings and emotions, right? So I said earlier, you can actually choose to be happy, you can actually choose to feel good, right? And this all depends on if you're emotionally stable and if you are capable of doing this. It's obviously a process and it takes time. I have luckily been able to get to the point where I'm able to do this and I'm able to understand how to do it. So through about a year of meditation, I was able to observe my thoughts and learn that these natural thoughts that come in through the ego, through the self-esteem, right, are naturally negative, right? And they're coming into our mind without us even trying, without us even wanting them to right and then we have our true self that yeah. it's the other side of the mind that can control the ego and put that negative thought to the side so think about it if you're meditating right and you're in a calm state of mind and you're able to control your ego where natural negative thoughts are not coming into your mind you're not going to experience that negative emotion and when you're not experiencing that negative emotion feeling thought you're able to feel good and it's also about the perspective you choose right so if you choose a negative perspective and you dwell on maybe a negative action that happened within your life and you're not forgiving yourself, you're not letting go to grow, you know, that can also take a toll on it. You can take a healthy perspective and ultimately you can take a healthy perspective and um, control your thoughts and emotions and feel good, right? So I do this on a daily basis. When I'm feeling maybe for a couple minutes down, I'm feeling down, I remind myself that that's just my ego putting in these negative thoughts and emotions, right? And it's not who I truly am. See, like I said in the Power of the Mind video, the mind is so much more powerful than you think, right? Each time you doubt yourself, you're th you're throwing you're throwing negativity at you for who you really are. You're limiting yourself of who you can be in reality, right? It's all created from the mind. The mind is the source of all of all we have in reality. Think about it. If you think negatively, your reality is going to be shitty, right? But if you think positively from within, right, and you th and you're able to control your thoughts and emotions, and it's definitely a hard process to do, but eventually you can learn how to do it. You're able to experience more of a flow state of mind, and more, and who you are truly, you are not your thoughts. And once you realize that, it helps you let go of those negative emotions and those negative uh, connotations and labels that you place on certain uh, aspects within your life, right? You're able to look at um, different ideas, different um, perspectives, and overall help better you as a person and experience a tr who you really are. When we go back to our early childhood, right? And we didn't care about anything. We didn't, we would constantly try things, try new things, experience euphoria for the first time in different activities, events, you know, every kid goes through this, right? They don't care if they fail. They don't care if they, um, you know, mess up, fall over, you know, dude, they'll keep doing it. They don't care, right? But as we get older, our ego starts to develop our self-esteem, our self-image, right? In the viewpoint of others, we are less likely 
to try new things. We're less likely to push past failure, right? We are our true self when we're young, right? But we're just not learning who we are. We don't have that knowledge. We don't have that brain development yet, right? So think about this, right? Obviously, as time goes on, right, there's new financial, economic limitations, right? But what if, what if there was a way where we could get back to our tr old true self and put our ego to the side, right? Let, let our self-esteem die down, our self-importance, and our self-image and the viewpoint of others, right? And get back to that complete euphoric stage where everything around us is amazing. And every experience we have, it's like we're experiencing it for the first time. Think about that. What if we could do that? And that's, that is the journey I'm on right now. And it, I'm trying to become not necessarily spiritually enlightened, and which would be great. And it's a very long process. But that's where I'm trying to get back. I'm trying to experience everything like it is for the first time. And it's a very hard process. And over the past 19 years of my life, I have been, I'm, I'm trying to find who I truly am. And I'm not my thoughts, I'm not my ego, because all that drags me down. Our ego is negative, and I hate, I do this often and I admit to it. I think about my self-esteem, my self-image, and the viewpoint of others, including you guys, what I, what I seem to you guys, what I seem to others at the gym, what I seem like to my friends, you know? And it's kind of embarrassing to think about, but our mind creates these insecurities and overall ruins our reality. So that yeah, is just kind of like an interesting way of uh, interest, my interesting perspective that I've thought about for the past couple of months and I haven't really really been able to get it out in words and this is the first time I've been able to do it. So um, it definitely took a lot of effort. It took, took a lot of information and I wrote down like a whole page of notes for this, but I want you guys to figure out, take this into, take this in to yourself and consider who are you truly, you know? What do you like when there's no one else around you? Who are you truly? Think back to when you were a kid and you experienced all these euphoric emotions, right? For the first time ever. And you had no ego, you had no sense of failure, you had no sense of self-esteem, right? You weren't, you, you didn't get embarrassed by failing. You didn't get embarrassed by doing all this other stuff, right? And see if you can choose to be happy in the mind of your true self. And see if you can develop a better sense of who you are and come along on this journey with me because I'm we're all equal you know or we all have a mind that's incredibly powerful and we set limitations on ourselves through our self-image and through the mindset of others you know and uh yeah it's definitely a slept on topic and uh make sure you guys if you enjoyed this video um subscribe if you're new just got a new subscriber 175 that's a big milestone I'm trying to get to 200 subscribers before the end of the summer and uh, I think we can do it honestly so uh, if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you like, comment, subscribe if you're new, and uh, peace the fuck.